This is the K218 star system with a red dwarf star and two planets located only 124 light years from Earth. Out of the two planets, K218c orbits very close to its star and is thus unlikely to be habitable. K218b, on the other hand, has been in the spotlight ever since the James Webb Space Telescope turned its eyes towards the planet. The recent surge of interest in this particular planet stems from new observations of its atmospheric composition, revealing some peculiar findings. Firstly, there was the presence of methane, which theoretically could indicate the potential for life as it is considered a possible biosignature. Additionally, there was an abundance of carbon dioxide and a notable absence of carbon monoxide, characteristics not dissimilar to Earth's atmosphere. However, the most intriguing discovery was the potential detection of dimethyl sulfide, DMS, a toxic gas known on Earth to be produced solely by certain algae in the oceans. If confirmed, this detection could signify a direct detection of life on another planet or more likely a water world, also known as a heme planet. But let's not get our hopes up just yet because these intriguing interpretations are far from settled. Is K218b truly a habitable ocean world, or could alternative explanations fit the JWST data just as well? Based on the density data provided by Webb, we can suppose that K218b may have an enormous ocean and a thick hydrogen atmosphere, resulting in the water being slightly warmer than here on Earth. So, the exoplanet could very likely be somewhere between a super-Earth and a sub-Neptune, and that fits the description of an ocean world quite well. The cherry on top here is the detection of methane, which is particularly exciting because typically it doesn't last in atmospheres for more than two or three years due to solar radiation. So there must be something that is refilling it in the atmosphere, and that raises the question, is this indirect evidence of life beyond our planet? Well, like I said earlier, let's not get our hopes up just yet. A team at NASA Ames Research Center and the University of Washington approached this question by using two sets of models with JWST data. The first model describes rocky planets with surface oceans with and without life, while the other set describes gaseous planets without a surface and without life. Both models predict the planet's photochemistry, as in the chemical reactions in the atmosphere driven by photons from the host star, and also the climate of the exoplanet. The team found that K218b is unlikely to be a lifeless water world because such a planet wouldn't have enough methane in its atmosphere to match the JWST observations. Yes, a water world with microbial life is more promising, with simple methane-producing organisms that may be able to produce the supply of methane seen in the planet's atmosphere. That's exciting. But despite the excitement, the team found that the uninhabitable gas-rich exoplanet model also fits the JWST data well and may present fewer challenges. The ocean world model not only requires life to explain its atmosphere but also struggles to reconcile the needed cool surface temperature with the likelihood of a runaway greenhouse effect. What this means is that the planet might be too hot for life to be present at all. Hence, the team suggests that efforts involved in looking for life on exoplanets should first test planetary temperature to ensure that it is not too hot to host an ocean. So, there you have it. Neither model perfectly fits all the features in K218b spectrum. Future JWST data could reveal one of two things, the presence of ammonia indicating a gaseous planet, or DMS, which would strongly suggest an inhabited water world. What do you think is likely, a water world or a gas giant? Let me know by dropping in your comments below. For now, we move on to another exoplanet that is unlike anything you've ever seen. There is an exoplanet that so far has been described as hellish, some scientists have even called it terrifying. This apparent hell of a planet revolves very close to its star, so close that the temperatures are high enough to vaporize lead. However, recently astronomers, while looking at the planet, saw something strange that led them to add a new adjective to the list, glorious. But how is a hellish planet glorious? Discovered in 2013, this planet called WASP-76b orbits its parent star just 48 million kilometers away. This means that the distance between the exoplanet and its star is much smaller compared to the distance between our Sun and Mercury, 
so you can imagine how hot it is going to be there. To make things hotter, its parent star WASP-76 is a yellow-white main-sequence star about 1.5 times more massive than our Sun. If we were to ever become an advanced interstellar species and decided to make a trip to WASP-76b, which is only 637 light-years away, what would we see? Well, for starters, the gas giant is tidally locked to its parent star, meaning one side always faces the star while the other is in perpetual darkness. As you can already tell, the day side of WASP-76b is not the average sunny day on Earth. Temperatures soar to over 2,400 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to vaporize iron. Yes, you heard that right, iron, a metal, turns into a gas on this scorching hot side. But here's the twist, the intense heat doesn't just stop at vaporizing iron. The planet's fierce winds carry this iron vapor to the cooler night side, where it condenses back into liquid form and falls as rain. Yes, iron rain. This iron rain has led astronomers to observe indications of a phenomenon known as glory in the atmosphere of the planet. This rainbow-like effect consists of colorful concentric rings of light that appear under unique circumstances. Apart from Earth, this effect has been seen only once in the atmosphere of our neighbor Venus. But there is a reason no glory has been seen before outside our solar system. It requires very specific conditions, first of all, you need particles in the atmosphere that are almost perfectly spherical, completely uniform, and stable enough to be observed over a long time. The planet's nearby star needs to shine directly at it while being observed by the observer at just the right orientation. The observer in this case would be us, or more specifically, the European Space Agency's exoplanet hunting mission called Characterizing Exoplanet Satellite, aka KEOPS. If repeated observations verify the phenomenon to be occurring on WASP-76b, it could change everything we know about the ultra-hot exoplanet. KEOPS monitored WASP-76b extensively, conducting nearly two dozen observations over three years. Scientists were particularly intrigued by an unusual light asymmetry observed in the planet's outer regions during its transits across its parent star. These observations unveiled a notable increase in light intensity along WASP-76b's eastern terminator line, marking the boundary between its night side and day side. The researchers attributed this distinct change in brightness to a pronounced directional and reflective phenomenon, which they dubbed the glory effect. Despite the chaos, it looks like we've detected the potential signs of a glory. It's an incredibly faint signal, said a scientist from ESA. But why is this a big deal? What significance does the glory effect hold for WASP-76b? The presence of this phenomenon in the ultra-hot Jupiter's atmosphere suggests the existence of clouds made of perfectly round water droplets. These clouds may have endured for at least three years or are constantly replenished. If the clouds persist, it implies that the temperature of WASP-76b's atmosphere, though extreme, remains relatively constant. This is a fascinating observation suggesting stability in a place previously thought to be endlessly turbulent. These findings also suggest that scientists studying exoplanets could look for similar light phenomena, such as starlight reflecting off liquid lakes or oceans on other distant worlds. This could be crucial in humanity's quest to find life beyond our solar system. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Bright Future because this is your space.